All right, guys, welcome to the workbench one more time. Now, um, in the previous video, talked a little bit about XLR4 and what it is, what the intent behind the design is. And now I'm going to take one of the prototypes, which I'm actually going to be sending out to one of the prize winners, and do a quick assembly video to explain how it goes together. Because the concept is a little bit different than SCX. So let's go ahead and grab all the carbon bits here. We've got two vertical plates. These are going to hold pretty much the FPV gear and the camera. We've got a top plate. We've got a lower mid plate. So this is where the stack flight controller and everything is going to go. We've got the very bottom plate. Of course we've got four arms. And then we've got this VTX SMA mounting plate. And two VTX um, accessory mounting plates. I don't know what we call these. You know, sometimes you come up with all these widgets and stuff and you got to figure out what to name them. Whatever. Anyways, moving on. Hardware kit. Now, I bagged this up real nice because I'm about to send this to one of the contest winners. And uh, normally it's just going to come in some bagging from Armored Tan Productions. It will include these cool orange standoffs. Guess what? These are the ones I've been talking about for a long time. Um, you know, they finally came in, so I was able to start adding them to the kits, and you're going to see these in the GoPro mounts and also in this XLR4 frame. So these are the Orion Orange. <laughs> and, yeah, that's stupid. It's just kind of a, a cool name I thought of for them. You know, I was thinking if I do other colors, I could name them weird things that have to do with the cosmos and the galaxy, like Galaxy Green or... I don't know. We'll figure it out. But anyways, for now, this is what I have orange standoff. So I'm going to dump this out so we can start assembling. All right. So let's just push some of this stuff off to the side. We're going to start with the bottom plate like you usually do. Get the standoffs out of the way. Now, there's going to be four uh, 16 millimeter screws, I want to say. That's usually what they are. Uh, in this kit, there's going to be another four... 12 millimeter screws. These are all M3s, by the way. You're going to have eight of these nylon nuts, but we're only going to need four for right now. The other four are for holding the flight controller on the standoffs. And then you're going to have six, um, I want to say these are six or seven millimeter M3 screws. I can never remember. Normally I buy six millimeter. However, Armor Tan Productions has six and seven millimeter, so. I put one of them in the kit. Either way, you're going to have about six of those. So, starting off with the lower assembly, we're going to go ahead and take our bottom plate and we're going to orient the arm like this. And you can see the little jog in the arm goes around the slot. So, we're going to take the 16 millimeter, the longest screw, stick it through. Let's see if I can do this while looking at the screen. Stick it through there through the most inner screw. This is where your flight controller stack's gonna go. We're gonna take this plate, and you'll notice that there's a little jog here, I guess you could say. You want that facing back. This is the back, this is the front where your FPV camera goes, so you want this facing back. Um, basically, that's a little relief. Some of the four-in-one ESCs have a connector on the bottom for all the channels um, to go to the flight controller, and that just gives you clearance. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna take plastic uh, nylon nut, put it on there, and that's gonna start our assembly. You don't need to have all this stuff really tight yet. In fact, I would advise against making it really tight until you've got this all, all the screws started. So, got one arm. I'm gonna take the 12 millimeter screw, put it through here on the outer portion of the arm, we're going to take a standoff and we're going to put that on there. All right, so you can see we've got one arm assembled. You can see it goes into the center like on the SCX kind of. And we're just going to repeat that process for the rest of the three arms. So I'm going to do that real quick. It'll probably go as a time lapse. All 
right, so now we've got the bottom section assembled. You can see it's pretty straightforward. You make sure you have this jog in the back for the connector for the for the 4 and one ESC, depending on which one you're using. Now what you would do here is you would go ahead and you would weave through your battery strap. They should be able to go through the slot, up over the center of the X, and back through the other slot. And then go ahead and mount your 4 and one ESC. And once you've got your 4 and one ESC in, you can wire up your motors, uh, you can put your standoffs on top of the 401 ESC for the flight control to go on top, so that's what the standoffs are included for. And now I'm going to show you how to build the FPV section of it, which is the top half. So, put this to the side. Let's go ahead and grab a camera. Now, uh, this camera is HS1177. You should be familiar with these. They're very popular, and I use them pretty much all the time. Now, the back end goes together in a unique fashion. You've got this top plate, and you've got these two side plates. And what happens is, they go like this, and slide over onto the... Okay, well, there we go. All right, yeah. They slide over, and you put two of them in there. And the camera's going to go in between. Now, as you can see, this is not a symmetrical top plate. Where this little notch is, you want that to go forward, and then this V-shape goes in the back. This is front for the side plates. You can see they have a little hole there for mounting the camera, and this is back. All right. So, the trick I'm going to show you is once you've got this on here, you can't put the cam in very easily unless you push one of these into the center. So that's going to rotate it out. You see why that v-shape is there kind of it's going to rotate it out that's going to allow me to wedge the camera in there so we're going to go ahead and do that which i need to look at what i'm doing all right now gotta be honest this camera's already got broken tab on one side because of a crash it was in in a different frame but it still works i assembled the other one like this the thing you do is once you got that in there and you've got the plates like that, you go ahead and put your screws in for your camera. You don't have to tighten them up yet. You still should be able to get to them still. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab the frame, which this would probably have your ESCs and everything wired on it and your flight controller and receiver most likely. We're going to slot this in. This is going to be a little challenging to be honest because there's a lot of parts you're holding together with your hands. But there's two tabs on the front and the back that slot into the lower plate. So you can see there's one, two, three, and four. And once you've got those situated, go ahead and slide this around until it's happy. Take your little six millimeter screws go into the standoffs through that top plate. Let's get the correct Allen wrench here so we can tighten these down. Trying to play with the light here, probably not the wisest thing, but oh well. The shadows are kind of annoying, so at least on the video, they don't really bother me working here, but I know somebody's gonna complain in the comments like they did about the camera focusing before. So, anyways, moving on. Tighten these four screws down. Alright, so. Um, there you go. You've got the main body section. You've got the camera in. And now for the last part. And that's the VTX mounting. So let's put this back to the side again. Out of the way. Let's grab a VTX for demonstration purposes. And uh, I'll show you what I got here. I've got a Hawkeye 200 milliwatt VTX. Now, there's several others that should work. 
FX 799T with an extension. Um, I think I added this extension myself, but you can buy these with it. Um, also, LaForge should also work. So, you know, pick your poison. There's a couple of VTXs that are a good form factor for this frame, and uh, the VTX that I'm going with is this Hawkeye. So, you want to make sure you have an SMA on it extension, um, and you're going to need a 90 degree SMA extension probably. So, we'll go ahead and take those off of there. I'm going to grab this VTX SMA mounting plate, stick this through here, put on the lock washer nut, etc. Usually I don't put the split lock washer on, just the serrated one. Get a wrench to tighten the sucker down. All right. Sorry if I did that off camera. So there you go. Your VTX is pretty much ready to go. Um, what you're going to want to do is uh, through the top plate, you can see there's some zip tie holes. You're going to want to position this so that your VTX is zip tied down here somewhere in between the two rails. And then what's going to happen is we're going to stuff the SMA in there between there with the mounting, the two mounting side plates. So let's show you how those side plates work now. Um, so you'll have two of those VTX side plates. And you're going to get two of these little sunken nuts or pen nuts, whatever you want to call them, M3 sized. And you need to basically press them into this hole. And you need to have two of these mirror image from each other, so you need a left and a right. Um, doesn't matter which one you make left or right, as long as they're opposite of each other, so you can start out however you want. So I'm just going to use some pliers to press these in. Shouldn't take too much force. The hole should be sized pretty good. Like I said, make sure you mirror image them. Make sure you mirror image them. So we're going to put it on this side for this one. If you don't mirror image them, you're going to have to pull that sunk nut out, which can be done. It's not that tight that you can't take it out, but it's just not fun either. So we've got our mirror, mirror image sunk nuts there. Now, let me go ahead and grab a zip tie for the VTX. I'm going to put it through. Um, you probably would have done this already because it's going to be hard to get your fingers in there if you have all the electronics in still. But I'm going to go ahead and do it now. So you can see, like I said, VTX, VTX O-ring, or not O-ring, sorry, VTX uh, zip tie goes through the two slots. There's two of them, so you put two on if you want or just one. Now we're going to go ahead and take this, put the VTX between the rails, put the zip tie through, so you can see I'm starting to zip tie that down, get that secure. Clip our zip tie. Now you could do whatever you want with this excess, you could zip tie it underneath there, wrap it around, uh, there's several ways to do it. But for now, I'm just trying to show how the frame goes together mostly. You want to take your side plate on one side with the sunken nut facing inward. Take the other one, put it over here. And now we're going to slide this in here. And you're going to have to do it. It's going to be under some tension. All right, so you can see I've started it. You can see it's sticking out the back. We're just going to slide that in. And it's going to be pretty tight. All right. So we've got it in. You'll know that you got it aligned because if you look right here, you'll see there's a hole on both sides where that sunk nut lines up. I'm going to take the last remaining 6 millimeter long screws and stick that in there. That's going to lock it down. That's going to keep your VTX SMA plate tight in there, and that's going to complete the frame. So let me do that real quick. If your sunk nuts do not 
um, fit in well, which I don't think it's the carbon so much as it is the steel part of the, lock, the sunk nut. You could always put a tiny little dab of CA around the edge. Just be careful not to get in the threads because you don't want it to stick to the screw. But anyways, that is the XLR4 frame. Um, it's a prototype. There'll be a couple of guys flying these and hopefully they'll give me feedback and we'll make changes if required. Thanks for tuning in and uh, tune back in again because I'm sure I'll have more updates on this and other projects.